Hey everyone, Rob here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to say the same thing in this video that I did in the video prior, and I'm probably going to say it again in the video in the future, and it's redundant and it's annoying, but if you could click that rectangle red subscribe button, it would really mean a lot to me. You'd get notified of the future videos on this channel, and if you like the content, it's a way to stay tuned with everything that's coming out. If you click that thumbs up button on YouTube. A lot of people don't think it does anything. It actually helps with the YouTube algorithm to put this video on top and show more people the content. So if you think it's worthwhile, if you could click that thumbs up button, really would mean a lot to me. So yes, I'm sorry, super redundant, probably going to say it again in the future. But if you could smash that like button and click the subscribe button would mean a lot. Today's topic is going to be the difference between Bitcoin and if the dollar decided to have a USD coin. This was actually a question from one of my Facebook friends who saw my last video and said, Rob, I agree that physical paper currency and coinage is going to be gone and obsolete if it already isn't kind of already. We're already using everything digitally anyway, so it's only so obvious that it's going to go digital in the future. Now, is the dollar going to actually become its own coin on a blockchain? Is it going to be a stable coin? What is it going to be and, and how is it going to differentiate from Bitcoin currently? Most crypto heads out there that are watching this are going, it's so obvious, come on. But the truth is, the reason I want to make simplified, simplified short clips for this channel specifically and why I appreciate this kind of uh, viewer being here I don't look at that question as, as a dumb question. I think it's a great question, and I think it's a question that's on a lot of people's minds. So my favorite way to make content is to just simplify it to the most basic possible formula or way to comprehend that subject. So the first major difference is that one of them would be a centralized currency, which means a government-backed currency, and a government-controlled currency, and one of them is completely decentralized. One of them operates peer-to-peer, person-to-person. doesn't matter if you're an Australian. It doesn't matter if you're an American, if you're in Europe, Germany, wherever you are. It's going to be the same thing. It's decentralized. It's peer-to-peer. -peer, it's not a euro. It's not a dollar. It's not a yen. It's a different currency in satoshi that other currencies can buy into and it can trade peer to peer now when i use that term currency i use it loosely because that's a very um controversial controversial subject um bitcoin is kind of like a digital gold some people don't like it to be called that because they think it's such different animals one of them's a physical thing one of them's a digital thing but if I was going to simplify it, it's kind of like a digital gold. Gold's worth money everywhere. It doesn't matter what country you're in. It's worth gold. It's gold. Bitcoin is in that same department. Now, if USD decided to be on its own blockchain, it would not be the same because it would be a centralized currency that's still on a fiat structure. So that's the first major difference, and that is going to guide us into the second major difference. So just to recap, one of them is decentralized, person to person, no government interference, nobody looking in on your finances, completely decentralized. One of them is centralized, and the government would see every single transaction that you do. That's the biggest difference. That leads into the second difference. And the second difference between being decentralized and centralized is that one is finite. Bitcoin, the algorithm ends at 21 million Satoshi coins. At 21 million, there will be no more available Bitcoin to be mined. So Bitcoin is mined by computers, costs a lot of money on electricity, a lot of com computational costs to make a Bitcoin. So there is that intrinsic value because it's hard for a computer to digitally make a Bitcoin. And then once the Bitcoin is made, it is a finite amount of them. In the beginning, it was very easy to mine a Bitcoin. Now, as we get closer and closer to that 21 million cap, 
it's becoming a very hard process to make just one Bitcoin. It's very, a lot of electrical costs. I believe what I was told is it's cost somewhere around like three to $5,000 to make one Bitcoin, depending on what your equipment is. So there's that. It's a finite amount of them. If the U.S. decided to make a USD coin, it would be a stable coin that they could inject however much they want. There would be no finite amount. It would be a digital coin that's operating on a fiat currency structure. So that's the simplest way to put it. Just two points. Um, I don't even want to go into a third point. Those are just the main two points. One of them is finite and decentralized. One of them is infinite and centralized where the eyeballs are looking at every transaction that you do. They can inject as much as they want. It's kind of a it's kind of crazy to wrap your head around how they get away with that, but that's the way it's always operated. It's the game of kicking the can down the road. Now with Bitcoin, the next question is, is it worth investing more so than, you know, keeping your money in cash? And the way that I would say it is don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know, I think it's a great idea to put, you know, 5%, 1% to 5% of your investable income in Bitcoin. I don't believe in all the different altcoins. I only believe in Bitcoin. That's the one that I think is great, um, at least at the current in the current climate. Um, but it's like a insurance play. It's an insurance play because if it does get adopted, Bitcoin becomes worth millions of dollars a coin. If it doesn't get adopted, it could be worth zero. Bitcoin could crash to being worth zero if it doesn't get adopted. And the only way it wouldn't get adopted or be used in any way, shape, or form is if it became illegal, if governments outlawed it, which is possible. The people would be very angry about that, and it probably wouldn't last. But it's either zero or millions. I don't think there's an in-between on Bitcoin. I think it's a crazy, crazy play, and I think you should risk a portion of your wealth on it. That is a different topic for a different video. Sorry to get into a tangent, but I just want to bring up the two main differences between a USD coin and it's it's up for debate lately. They're talking about it. So it, it very well might happen. And Bitcoin. Just a quick video. Hope that kind of helps people navigate the difference between the two. And thank you so much for watching. If you would be so kind, if you haven't clicked that rectangle subscribe button, would mean a lot to me if you click that because I'm trying to grow this page. And if you smash that like button, it would really help this video be seen by more people. If you want to share it, that also is very appreciated. Also, if you have input on this subject, because I don't know everything. I'm learning new stuff every day. I'm just sharing my opinions and hoping if my way of simplifying it helps some people. But if you have some input, please put a comment down below. Um, very, very open to that. And I'm sure more people would like to see what you have to say. Thanks again so much for watching. Please subscribe, click that subscribe button. Please do it. It really mean a lot. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you at the next video.